our brothers and sisters on this channel mixing and heart initiative center i am by the names of joseph and today's topic is the hemostasis 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 i'm not good enough in lighting hemostasis Friends, is it uh, crucial for us to have the sound and knowledge about hemostasis? You have to remember that uh, uh, most of uh, the challenging, preventable problem we have in many areas of medicine today is the problem related to hemostasis, like excessive breathing for the patient undergoing surgery or the patient with the uh, disorders of hemostasis. And the 3 to 5 percent of those patients, especially in obstetrics, die from that problem because of different problems like uh, uh, genetical defeats of the patient, that's one second, you see the lack of sound in origin of many healthcare providers about physiology of hemostasis and the pharmacology of hemostasis because you know you cannot treat a patient who is having excessive breathing once you don't you don't know uh, the use of pharmac uh, hemostasis pharmacology like warfarin, heparin, noxaparin, dabigetrac with other drugs so in this part of this course hemostasis uh, we cover the physiology of hemostasis, the disorders of hemostasis, and the medical intervention or medical pharmacology uh, for stopping uh, the excessive breathing when the body fails with the normal function and the normal mechanism of the body to stop hemostasis. Hemostasis is uh, different from Hemostasis. Don't be confused. It's different from homeostasis. Yes, because uh, homeostasis, which is not the topic of today, is all about maintaining the internal environment of the body. While hemostasis is composed by two words. The first one is emo, emo, first one is emo, second one is stasis, stasis. Emo means blood, while stasis leads to Stopping. Stopping. Now, hemostasis. It's literally me stopping blood. That's one. Second, hemostasis refers to the process by which body sears, sears the excessive blood leakage a leakage from saturation by using different mechanisms that's why friends as you have seen Hemostasis is the process by which the body sears 
the excessive breathing of pus, uh, of uh, blood leakage from the circulatory system of the body, you have to keep in mind that this is only get successful when the severed or damaged blood vessel are small. To mean that for this process cannot succeed for when the larger blood vessels are big or larger blood vessels. When uh, the blood vessels that have been that have broken and larger ones, it needs medical intervention like surgery and surgery. You have to keep in mind that the key players in this game or match are platelets. The key players in this game of hemostasis is platelets. Platelets. You know this is uh, one of the three components of blood cells. Because we have you if you remember we have white blood cells, red blood cells and platelets. So now friends we have uh, three steps to have this hemostasis. First one First one, we have uh, three types of hemostasis. Three steps of hemostasis. Let me change uh, for this side to mean that to have hemostasis, to have hemostasis, the body must fight to have those three steps. Three steps of hemostasis. The first step for the body to be successful during stopping the blood leakage is the quantum core vascular spas or transient vasoconstriction. That's the first step. Second step, we have temporary formation of platelet plug. Third, we have coagulation cascade or blood protein mechanism. Now we are going to pass through all those points to see how this process happen. Friends, we are going to discuss one by one steps of hemostasis. First one you have seen is a vascular Pass or vaso 
constriction. That's one. Second, you have primary elastasis or temporary formation of platelet plaque, which is primary hemostasis. Third, we have coagulation, coagulation cascade, which is secondary hemostasis. Friends, we are going to discuss one by one. Let us start by vascular spasm or vasoconstriction. This vascular spasm starts or gets initiated when the blood vessel is damaged. For example, let us sketch something like blood vessel. Blood vessel. This is a blood vessel which is somehow blocked. Blood vessel which is blocking somewhere here like this. Here we have white blood cells. Uh, we have uh, lady, lady blood cells. Lady blood cells. White, white platelets. Platelets, white, white, platelets leaking, white blood cells leaking, lady blood cells leaking. All the components of blood now are able to break, uh, to leak from the system. What happens? First, step one. We have injury, injury. When you have injury, you have to remember that uh, in the blood, we have blood components, erythrocytes, White blood cells, white blood cells, lady blood cells, and the platelets. Platelets. What happens when a certain blood vessel is damaged or severe? Vasospas takes press. Friends, what happens? In the vasospas, the smooth muscle in the walls of blood vessel. In the smooth muscle in the front of the walls of blood vessel, 
It has circular layers and the longitudinal layers, even though longitudinal layers are not present, present in the all grand vessels walls, except larger blood vessels. To mean that in the small blood vessels, we have circular, circular layers. What happens? What happens in this process? Circular layer of smooth muscle in the walls of the blood vessel tend to constrict the flow of blood out of circulatory system. What happened for longitudinal layers? Layers of smooth muscle in the walls of blood vessels. They shorten. They shorten. To stop, to try to stop this leakage of blood from circulatory system frame. Once this contraction happens, the blood vessel starts to release some substances that locates and enhance vasoconstriction. What are those substances? Vascular spas or vasoconstriction is believed to be initiated by several substances called endothelium endothelium now friends what are endothelins endothelins These are the substances which are, which, uh, which are vasoconstrictors in nature that are released by two things. One is vessel lining cells. Second is by pain receptors. Pain receptors in response to the injury. That's why. Right. Second, you have to keep in mind that once one of any of the three steps fails, we are going to have what we call excessive bleeding.
This is all about uh, vascular spasm. Now we are going to go on with the, the second part, which is formation of platelet plaque. Let us move on the second step of hemostasis, which is primary hemostasis of formation of temporary platelet plaque. Two, formation of platelet plaque. This is uh, the second step in hemostasis. What happens in this phase or step of hemostasis? Friend, the member on the starting, I've told you that in this game, the key players are platelets. In this stage, remember, friends, in the plasma that is uh, floating free of platelets. There's platelets start uh, to stick or to move to the site of injury. Once they reach there, once they reach there, they start to clump together and become spiking the, they start to clump together became spiked and sticky with underlying connective connective tissues and exposed collagenous fibers. Collagenous fibers. This is one. Friends, as these platelets collect on the site of injury, injury, they start to release some substances. that enhance homeostasis. This processing is assisted or maintained by substance called glucoprotein called Von Will Blood Factor, which helps to stabilize the blood net plug. Friends, remember what we said that. The platelet, as they get connected on the site of injury, they start to release some substances from its, their glandules. Uh, among those substances released from uh, glandules of platelets, we have what we call adenosine diphosphate. Adenosine diphosphate. which liquids additional
flatlet flatlet only the severely side with intention of reinforcing and expanding Platelet plant. That's one substance, adenosine, biphosphate. Second substance is vasoconstrictor serotonin. Serotonin. They are also secreted from platelet granules with the intention of maintaining. Hemostasis, especially, especially platelet plant formation. Third, we have other special substances that are prostaglandins. Prostaglandins and the Phosphor repeats, especially alkylic acids. These are also the vasoconstrictors which maintain, which maintain, uh, which activate. These are the substances that are secreted to initiate to activate and initiate initiate another step which is coagulation which is a sophisticated step of hemostasis. Friends, you ha have to remember that there is steps first and second by the time of body, by the time of body, why sophisticated mechanism and repairs are being made by the body? Now we are already talking, we already finished to talk on this two points or steps of hemostasis. We are going to stop by here and the next video we will discuss particularly on this topic. Hemostasis. But you have to keep in mind for the third step of hemostasis, which is coagulation, we need prostaglandins and phosphorylates, especially alkylonic acids, for coagulation cascade to take place. Thank you.